Well, as you make your way back to your seats, um, I'm very thankful again that we can join together in this time of worship. Uh, Last week, church family, um, we talked about wrestling with uncertainty, and we looked at this scripture verse from Genesis about this man named Jacob and how he wrestled with someone all night long, and it was someone that was somehow a messenger from the Lord or was there on the Lord's behalf, and we talked about wrestling with uncertainty and how Jacob was at kind of this crucial moment in his life of what he was going to do next. And as we worked through that verse and talked with one another about facing uncertainty, um, I finished with saying that wrestling with uncertainty should lead us to a place of prayer and praise, that, that we should be drawn in those times of uncertainty to both prayer and praise. Now, there will always be a certain amount of uncertainty in life. Of that, you can be certain. Uncertain, certain, certain of uncertainty, something like that, right? You can be certain there will be uncertainty. But how we handle that uncertainty matters. The way that that we face things in the midst of our life, that doesn't mean you have to be poised and never get flustered. It doesn't mean that you have to put on this show. Remember, we talked about that when we went through the Midwest Nice Sermon series. You don't have to pretend to have it all together. But when you do face uncertainty, how you respond to it matters. The people around you will see how you respond to uncertainty or times of trouble or see how you respond to times of joy and times of blessing. Your children or your children's children will see how you respond. They will follow suit. They learn from your example. Truthfully, church family, I think that the way that we handle things in life, it is a reflection of what we believe about the mighty God that we serve. And I'll admit that sometimes I act like God can't handle this. Like, I need to take control. And I'll I'll admit that, and that's a flaw that I have, and it's something that that I'm working on with the Lord. That There are times when uncertainty strikes, and instead of turning to prayer and praise, I instead wrestle God for control. Sometimes I get too focused on me and what I'm going through and what I'm facing, and I forget that God can already see what's ahead. He already knows the days ahead of me and what I will face. Sometimes instead of saying, Jesus, take the wheel, I demand the keys to the car. And it is a car, by the way, if you've ever wondered what Jesus would drive, it is a car. Um, It's biblical. It's in John chapter 12, verse 49. Jesus said, I do not speak of my own accord. Right? So it's a bad church joke. And if you're shaking your head thinking, well, Jesus wouldn't drive a Honda, he'd drive a domestic. Jesus wasn't American, so um, (laughs) anyway, back on topic with prayer. Today we're talking about prayer, that in times of uncertainty, times of blessing, anything that you're facing in life, that really we should be a people who turn to prayer and praise. Blessing is pouring out on us, so we pray a prayer of thanksgiving. Hardship has befallen our lives, so we turn to God and We pray for him to be at work. We praise his name regardless. We're a people of prayer and praise, and today we're going to discuss prayer. And oftentimes in life, we think about, well, you know, if I just do something good, something good will happen to me. Like when we talk about, well, we'll just pay it forward, right? I'll pay it forward to the next person. Something good has happened, I'll pay it forward to them. Like somehow that will bring us greater blessing in life. Now, the reality is in Scripture, it doesn't really speak of karma in that sense of paying things forward. It does talk about planting seeds, about reaping what you sow, about investing for the future. And so I'm going to posit to you that instead of paying it forward in good times, or maybe when you face bad times, instead of paying it forward to try to receive some blessing, like somehow the universe is demanding you hand something off to receive something else, instead we should turn to our Lord, we should follow the example of Christ, We should remember that we're called to a relationship with our Father. We're called to a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so what we should do instead is we should pray it forward. That if we want to grow spiritually, if we want to deepen our walk with the Lord, if we want to have a better understanding of who we are and of who God is, then we should pray things forward. And I'm not talking about praying it forward by just sending out random prayers. I'm talking about praying yourself praying your family, praying your church, praying your community forward. That we're looking ahead, that we're constantly drawing closer to the Father so we can walk better with Him 
and move to the future that he is calling us to. You see, our walk should change when we walk with the Lord. Last week when we read that section of Genesis about this man named Jacob, and we talked about him wrestling with that man all night, when day began to break, that man touched Jacob's hip. If you remember the verse from last week, when he touched his hip, it wrenched it from the socket. Now, if that were to happen to you, I'm sure that your walk would be changed. Philip recently just had his hip replaced. I'm sure his walk has been changed. (laughs) When we encounter God, it should change our walk. When we draw closer to him, it should change the way that we walk. It should change the way that we live, the way that we talk, the way that we interact with others, and really the way that we interact with God. As we draw closer to Jesus, we should walk more like Jesus instead of maybe walking the way we always have or walking the way of the Lord. So today as we talk about praying things forward, I'm going to ask a question. Is your prayer life changing the way that you look at the world? Is your prayer life changing the way that you walk in this world? Is your prayer life moving you forward and closer to God? You see, prayer is one of those things that it should be one of the most basic things we do as a follower. Maybe your grandmother, your mother, your father, someone in your <clears throat> excuse me, someone in your life, maybe they were the ones that modeled prayer for you when you were younger. Oftentimes, prayer is something that we learn simply by being in the presence of it, that when other people pray, we then learn to pray. It should be one of the most basic things we do as a follower, but oftentimes, it, oftentimes it's one of those things that we fail to do regularly. Like we know there are things that we should be doing, and we think, oh, I'll get to that later. Oh, I'll, I'll do that later. Have you ever said, I'll do that later, and then regretted it? I think we all have. I'll get to that later, and then you don't, and then you realize that you've missed something. Prayer should be one of the most basic things we do as a follower of Jesus, but oftentimes we forget the importance of it. Every day I should be talking to my spouse so that we grow closer together. If I don't talk to her, we're obviously going to drift apart. Prayer is like that. In fact, how many times have you before been speaking with someone and said, oh, you know, I'll pray for you, and then you forget. I'm guilty of that. (laughs) I am guilty of that. Someone's talking, we we share different things, something's going on in their life, and I'll be sure to pray for you. And then an hour later, I'm like, what was it that they said? I don't don't remember. (laughs) And then I forget to pray. A few weeks back, when we went through our Midwest Nice Sermon Series, I wanted to talk about prayer during it. I think I will when we come back to the next section of Midwest Nice, Because one of the things that we get used to saying, especially in in a culture that is fairly versed in Christianity, even though we're kind of a post-Christian culture now, we're moving more away from it and people are being drawn to it, we still say things like, well, we'll pray for that. We'll be praying for you. And I don't know why, but even if it's a singular, it's just you, many times we still say, oh, we'll pray for you. We'll we'll be praying for that. I don't know where the we comes in, (laughs) but we say it. It becomes almost like a goodbye. You talk with someone and you share a few different things, I can guarantee at the state fair coming up, people are going to see people they haven't seen in a year. They're going to talk. They're going to bring up something that happened in their life, and you're going to depart one of them. Somebody's going to say, we'll be praying for you. It's a way of saying goodbye almost in our culture. We'll be praying for you. You go online and somebody shares an article or a post about their life, automatically, thoughts and prayers but do we actually pray? I think more often than not, we fail to. More often than not, we fail to really pray. You see, I think we should, when we say we'll be praying for you, we should pray. When we type out thoughts and prayers, we should pray. I think every day we should be in prayer. I know that in my life, my faith and my trust in God has grown the more that I connect to God in prayer. The more that I pray, the closer I get to God, the more I see him at work. The less that I pray, the more distant I feel from the Lord, the less I see him moving in the world. When I fall away from spending time in prayer, and usually my excuse is, well, I'm just too busy. When I stop spending time in prayer, my trust in God 
begins to diminish. And soon on this journey of life, when I've demanded the keys to the car and Jesus can take a back seat, because I'm not connecting to him in prayer, pretty soon on that road of life, I'm stopping because I see puddles ahead. Because I have forgot that I serve a God who has split the sea. I'm uncertain because there's puddles and I forget that God parted the sea for his people because I'm not connecting to him like I should. Has anyone ever been there? You've walked with the Lord, you felt close to him, and then maybe there's been this disconnect. Maybe it's been a season of drought in your life. And so we throw up our hands and we say, God, what are you doing? God, where are you taking me? God, where are you at? I know in my life, I want to quit saying, God, what are you doing? And instead be better at saying, God, wherever you lead, I will follow. I will follow. One of the ways that that happens, becoming someone who begins to follow the Lord more, who connects to the Lord more, one of the ways that that happens is through prayer. Now, we talk a lot about prayer. It's part of our common language, especially here in the Midwest. I'll be praying for you, thoughts and prayers. I've already mentioned that. But when it comes down to it, if I were to ask you, what is prayer? All of you might have a very different answer. It could be very similar, but it would be a varied and a different answer. The best way that I can put it, and I think this is what Scripture speaks to with prayer, is that prayer is simply communicating with God. It's communicating with God. Now, I say communication because communication is a two-way street, and it happens in more than one ways. It's a two-way street, and it happens in more than one way. You see, communication is talking, and it's listening. Communication is giving, and it's receiving. Communication is connecting with one another. And like any relationship, communication builds trust. The more you communicate, the more open you are, the more you connect, the more trust is built. Prayer is simply communicating with God. I think too many of us try to trust God without talking to Him, without communicating with Him. You see, we say, God, I'm going to follow your leading. And instead of opening up ourselves to talk to God and to hear from God, we say, you know what, God, I'm going to follow your leading. So I'm going to start looking for signs in the world. I'm going to start looking everywhere else except first turning to you in prayer. We search for messages, but we don't really stop to listen We look for things, and we try to make those things the source of our life instead of connecting to the source of life. And so I'm going to take a minute and just be real with you on kind of the the places that we often look to connect with God. You see, many of us, I think we try to get by in our lives, especially our spiritual life. I just need to be able to get by. God, I just need you to sustain me when really God has called you to a life of abundance. And so if you're one of those Christians who's trying to get by in life, God, just, I just need another week, and you're trying to get by in life on just a once-a-week sermon or maybe some inspirational tweets or an Instagram post or a 10-second TikTok, and you're thinking, God, I'll hear from you in this. You know what? I went to church, and I just need a little bit something extra, so I'm going to listen to a sermon on the TV. I can't tell you how many times people have told me, well, I didn't make it to church, but I did watch two services on the television. Is that changing the way you walk? Maybe a little. But are you connecting with God every day? You see, you could listen to a thousand of my sermons. But if you start connecting to God every day in prayer, it's going to be more beneficial. Should you come to church? Yes. (laughs) Yes, you should. Should you connect with your community of believers? Yes. We're called to pray together for one another and with one another. But I think if we're just trying to get by every week, without really connecting with God, then the keys that you've demanded from the Lord and that car that you're driving on the road in the direction you want, pretty soon it's going to be running on fumes. We need to be a people who stop just trying to get by and be a people who start living into the relationship we've been called to. You weren't saved so you could keep living the way you had been living. Remember, when you connect with God, it should change the way that you walk. We've been saved to be in a relationship with our Creator and our Savior. You will always be searching for something until you have an active relationship with Jesus. An active relationship with Jesus, not a passive one. 
Not one where you're just waiting for God to open the world up before you and show you some divine sign, but one where you're connecting with God on a daily basis. The more you communicate, the more trust is built. The more you begin to lean into God. Because communication in all relationships, communication builds trust. That's what it does. The more I communicate with my wife, the more I trust her. The more I communicate with my children, the more I trust them. Communication builds trust. My friends, imagine, imagine how much more time you would spend in prayer if you trusted that God was at work in your life. How much more time would you spend in prayer if you trusted that God was actually there listening to you and at work in your life? I think too often we spend time in prayer only when it's a break in case of emergency situation. I feel like everything's falling apart, so now's the time to break the glass, go to God in prayer, and beg that he shows up. When the reality is, is that strangers beg, but sons and daughters go right to their father. Strangers beg, but sons and daughters, they boldly approach their father because they trust him, and they know that he is there for them. Hebrews chapter 4, 16, it says, Let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy. We will find grace to help us when we need it most. Strangers beg, but sons and daughters through our faith in Christ, we boldly approach the throne of God. You can search every other religion in the world. None of them are going to tell you to boldly approach their God. But that's what our Father calls us to. We need to be a people of prayer because prayer is communication and communication builds trust. And it allows you to go right to God. You don't have to go through me. You don't have to go through a priest. You don't have to do anything special except know God. Believe in his son, Jesus Christ. And you can go directly to him. Prayer is simply communicating with God. So how should we do that then? How should we be in prayer to God? We should go to him both in good times and bad. We should go to him in the mundane and in the extraordinary. Today, I want to address two kinds of prayer that I think we see in Scripture. Are there more than this? Yes. Are there other examples? Yes. There are many different kinds of prayers. There are many different ways to do it. I've included one in the bulletin insert called the Acts Method. Adoration, confession, and I don't remember the rest. (laughs) Yes, thanksgiving and supplication. But today, I want you to look at two kinds of prayer that I think are in Scripture and I think are needed in everyday life. The first is unceasing prayer. We see this in 1 Thessalonians. See, the Apostle Paul, when he was writing to other believers and he was giving them instruction about life through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, he wrote to them and he said, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Another way translated, it just says, Pray always. Always. And give thanks in all circumstances. Unceasing prayer is praying to God all day long about everything, about anything. It's a prayer that is both purposeful and it's a prayer that's fluid. It's a prayer that's focused, but also at the same time a prayer that can be distracted. It's a prayer that's carried out in the car. It's a prayer that's in your heart and in your mind. Sometimes it's out loud. It's a prayer that you do on the job when you go to school or wherever you're at. The best way I can describe it is that unceasing prayer is how Jesus becomes your best friend. That kind of friend that you call and you talk to on the phone and it seems like it's been 10 minutes, but it's been an hour and a half and all of a sudden you got to get supper started. That's the kind of prayer life we should have. An unceasing prayer that as I go throughout the day, I'm not only thanking God for what he's doing in my life and in the lives of others, but then I'm going to lift up people from my church family. And then I'm going to remember that person that I talked to that they said that their friend was going through a rough time. And then because I'm connected to the prayer chain and I got a text message, I'm praying for that person right now. It's an unceasing prayer about anything and everything. It's that daily connection with God. Unceasing prayer, my friends, again, is how Jesus becomes your best friend. 
And then with that unceasing prayer, I think there's another kind of daily prayer we should have in our lives, and that's a structured prayer. You see, while the unceasing prayer is something that's fluid, it's dynamic, it's happening all day long about anything and everything, a structured prayer is something that is done at specific times in a specific place. A structured prayer is something that Jesus himself talks about in Matthew chapter 6 when he says when you pray, not if you pray, not whenever you remember to pray, but when you pray, go into your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who's in secret. A structured prayer is setting aside a time, it's setting aside a place, and it's going to God in prayer with a purpose. I'm turning off my phone, there's no radio, there's no TV. This is time that I will spend in prayer. It's intentional. And sometimes there's almost a ceremony to it. I'm going to go to my room. I'm going to shut the door. I'm going to be alone. I'm going to pray. Now, we don't have to have a structured prayer for God to somehow hear us better. He hears us regardless. But what a structured prayer does is it sets your attitude to be in an attitude of prayer and worship. It's a reminder to you to eliminate distractions, to become focused, to be intentional about connecting with God. In the same way that an unceasing prayer is like talking to your best friend, a structured prayer is going to your father, calling them up and speaking with intention. Dad, here's what's going on in my life right now. I just need to talk to you. A structured prayer isn't a well, I'll just pray until I fall asleep. No, the goal there is to pray until you fall asleep. The the goal of a structured prayer is to go before God in a specific time, a specific place, for a specific purpose. Now, this Acts model of prayer that I have included in your bulletin, it fits both. You can pray like that all day long, and you can pray like that in a specific time of prayer. One that I wanted to include, but felt like, well, we know it kind of well, so maybe we can do it without having a handout, is the Lord's Prayer. And the way that the Lord's Prayer is structured is a way you can structure your prayers all day or in structured prayer. Our Father, God, you are holy. You are in heaven. Great is your name. And you follow that method of prayer. You pray for others. You pray for yourself. You give God that adoration. You acknowledge who he is. By practicing both types of prayer, you will strengthen your relationship with God. You will grow in your desire to follow Him in every area of your life. And this is something that I cannot convince you of until you try it yourself. If you begin to spend daily time in prayer, in both of these ways, in unceasing prayer and in structured or intentional prayer, pretty soon what's going to happen is that when you're reading Scripture, it's going to become more alive. You're going to connect to it more. The Bible will just jump right out at you. All of a sudden, your conversations with people, they're going to be more connected. People are going to be talking to you, and Scripture verses are going to pop in your head. You're going to be wondering about how you might pray for them, what's really going on in their life. When they say hello and they talk about their day, you're going to see what's going on really behind their eyes. You see... Prayer is about communicating to God, and communication is a two-way street. It's about you connecting to God and really God connecting to you also. The Holy Spirit showing up more in your life and connecting you with those around you. If you want your spiritual life to move forward, church family, you need to pray it forward. Every day connecting with the Lord in prayer. What might that look like? Again, with that unceasing prayer or that structured prayer, I'll give you an example. So last week, I, uh, I mentioned how the previous week was a little bit stressful. And I talked about uncertainty, and I said I was uncertain if I was even going to be able to preach a sermon. It was a busy week, different things that went on. Part of the reason that it was kind of busy and a little bit stressful is we were planning for a camping trip to go up to Aberdeen. So on Sunday after church, we started making sure things were packed. I had the manor service at 3 o'clock, went and did that, came home and thought, we'll just throw everything in our little pop-up camper and we'll hit the road. Well, we threw everything in our little pop-up camper and then the camper wouldn't pop down, so that was great. 
And we worked on different things and then different problems. And we've got three kids, and Jessica and I are working on it. And Cyrus is a great helper with it. But every time we try to do something, Jameson's in and out of it. Etta, you need to watch Jameson, and she's off doing something else. Who knows? It's Etta. Jameson's running around. We had planned to be on the road by maybe 3.30 or 4 o'clock. I got done at 3.30, and I thought, hey, 3.45? Like, it only takes a few minutes to throw things in and hit the road. What time did we leave? Was it 5.30? Yeah, 5.30. We didn't get there until 8 o'clock. We had planned to be there for supper. We pulled in at 8 o'clock. We got unpacked. We figured things out. Breaking the camper just a little bit. Uh, <laughs> we'll fix it. Don't worry. We had a great time. We took the kids to Storybook Island. It was wonderful. They played. We were camping with friends. It was a great time. And then the second night that we're camping, it's uh, 1230-ish or so. Jameson woke up with some cramps in his stomach. If he eats the wrong things at wrong times, it troubles him when he sleeps. So we went and we got him out of the kid's side of the camper and brought him over to ours. And we're just trying to keep him calm until his stomach feels better. And then all of a sudden, our camper starts to do this. Because if you don't know, on, was it Monday night? Yeah, on Monday night, Aberdeen was hit by some pretty good storms. And it happened before we got there, and then it happened while we were there. Our pop-up camper is 30 years old. It's not the best. And so even a five-mile-per-hour wind is going to shake the thing. And this thing's just rattling back and forth. Huge winds are gusting in, and we're just wondering, what's going to happen? I start praying. Jessica, she's praying, and we're just saying, God, we just need you to provide. We need your protection. We need you to be at work in this. Keep this camper together. Keep us safe. Like We're praying for a miracle at this point because it's not the best camper. Um, and then what happens is the crazy wind stops. I think, God... Are you doing this, Lord? What, what's going on? And I'm thankful. I say, God, thank you for providing. Thank you for keeping us safe. God, what's next? And so I pull up my phone and look at the radar, and we're in that part of the storm where one little piece goes by and you got a bigger piece coming. And, and so we start praying again. I'm like, Jessica, we're going to get hit by a huge piece, probably here in 30 minutes. And so we're praying some more. And about that time, her phone dings. And the people that we're camping with, they had rented a cabin. We were in a camper. She had woken up um, and texted us and said, hey, it seems like it's stormy out. Do you guys want to come over to the cabin? Now, we had been praying for God to be at work, praying for God's protection. God, just if you would provide. Now, we could have said, no, we've prayed and we're faithful. God will spare us. But we also knew that God works through people. So we said, yes, we'll be right over. And we, we picked up our kids. We took them over. We laid them down. I ran out the camper for a couple other things, came back. And as soon as I got in and closed the door, sheets of rain started just pounding the cabin. I go and I look out the window, and that camper is just rocking back and forth. And I know, man, this is not something that we would want to be in that for. Now, the storm passed after a while, and Jessica and I, we finally start going back to sleep in the camper. Everything was fine. It was probably close to 4 o'clock in the morning. And I had mentioned to her as we're getting ready to go back to sleep, you know, we could have prayed and said, God, protect us, and then just ignored everything else. But we prayed, God, protect us and provide, and at that same moment, someone texts us and say, hey, you want to come to our place that's safer right now? And so we responded in faith. You see, God will work in miraculous ways. Our camper was fine. It didn't break down, and nothing major happened. But at the same time, I trust that the Holy Spirit was at work in their life. And they were prompted to text us. And we were safe in the midst of the storm in a place where we didn't have to be stressed and wondered, are we going to blow over or not? When we prayed to God, we prayed for God to be at work and our eyes were open to how he might move. God gave us shelter in the midst of a storm. And my friends, I attribute that to prayer. I attribute that to connecting to God and being connected to others. There will always be a certain amount of uncertainty in your life. Is this going to hold together, or God, is everything going to blow apart? But how we handle it as a Christian, as a dedicated follower of Jesus, how we handle that uncertainty matters. Because how we handle things, it is truly a reflection of what we believe about God. If you're ready to take a next step in your spiritual life, knowing that you need to trust God more, that you need to have your eyes open to Him more, if you're ready for God to really begin to work through you in powerful ways, 
the biggest thing that I can tell you is first start in prayer. Begin to pray unceasingly and set aside a time every day to connect to Him. You'll be amazed at what God can do. If you'll pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this example from Scripture and just also from life about how you move through prayer and how it connects us to us. We thank you for Jesus' example of how he oftentimes went off by himself to connect to you in prayer and how he also taught us to pray. Father God, we are so thankful that we have these examples from Scripture from the Apostle Paul and other disciples about how they continually went to you in all things first in prayer, in times of sorrow or in times of great joy. Help us to be a people who respond in prayer that we pray with you throughout the day, that we talk to you because we know that you are here with us and that we also set aside a time to connect to you in powerful ways. Father God, no matter what uncertainty we might face in this world, in this nation, in our community, no matter if it's a pandemic or wars or strife, no matter if it's just problems between neighbors or issues in the family, help us to be a people who trust in you. May our trust grow as we grow in prayer. We thank you so much for Jesus Christ, for being able to connect with you through what he has done for us on the cross. It's in his name that we pray, and we will also pray now as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Church.